We have Marcia Haddad Economopoulos, who's the director of the museum, who's going to speak about the Sephardic and Romaniote experience, um, including Yanina. Um, this is during the Holocaust. And so this will cover the Greece, Rhodes, and the Balkans. So here is Marcia um, Economopoulos. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's my honor to be here. It's my honor to be representing Kalakadosha Yanina. I want to thank Afram for his unbelievable work in putting this all together. And I have to ask your pardon. I made a promise to my Nona, my grandmother, many years ago, that I would search out the story of what happened to our people. I've spent my life studying the story of Greek Jewry, having lost so many in my own family from Salonika. I attended a conference at Yad Vashem a number of years ago, and the theme was, get it right. Simply put, we are at the point now where we're losing the eyewitnesses to what happened, and it's so important to get it right. So let me make a couple of corrections seems to be my job. Uh, the unfortunate desecration in Salonika was at the site of the former Jewish museum, um, uh, cemetery, where a memorial was set up on what is now the campus of the University of Arisado in Salonika in memory of the Jewish museum. So often, newspapers report things erroneously. We cannot let this happen. We have to step forward and we have to correct it. On that note, 87% of Greek Jews perished in the Holocaust. Bef at the onset of World War II, there were approximately 76,000 Jews in what is now Greece. 97% perished in Salonika, where my family came from. My grandfather was the only surviving member of a family of 11 children. In Yanina, 91% perished. On the island of Rhodes, 91% perished. Total was 87%. There was also a comment, Jamila came from Monastia. She didn't come from Skopje. She was a Monastir Lee, as was my great-grandfather, right? So, now that I've corrected everything, I can move on with my program. <laughs> I've been given 20 minutes to tell the story of Roman Yod and Sephardic Jews in the Holocaust. First, I want to start out by placing Roman Yod and Sephardic Jews, the, their losses within the bigger picture. The initial picture, 11 million total victims of Nazi Germany. Six million of them were Jews. Due to the extensive research on the part of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, these figures have now been changed, to my knowledge. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Over 15 million killed, seven million of them were Jews. An estimated 58% of all Jews in Europe were killed during the Holocaust. Of those, 210,000 were Sephardic and Roman Yod. An estimated 3% of all Jews murdered in the Holocaust. Of those murdered, 7,000 were Roman Yods. So why do we discuss these small numbers? We tell these stories because wiped out in the Holocaust were the great European population centers of Sephardi, Judeo-Spanish-speaking uh, Judeo Jews, and Roman Yod Greek-speaking Jews. This led to the almost complete demise of unique languages and traditions. Sephardi Jewish communities from France and the Netherlands in the Northwest to Yugoslavia and Greece in the Southwest 
almost completely disappeared. We tell these stories because they are our stories and there is no one else to tell them. On the eve of World War II, the European Sephardi community was concentrated in the Balkans. The countries of Greece, Yugoslavia, and Bulgaria. Its leading centers were Salonika, Thessaloniki, Sarajevo, Belgrade, and Sofia. The center of Romano Greek-speaking Jews was in Yanina, but there were also Romano communities in Arta, Prevesa, Patra, Corfu, Athens, Kalkis, and Zakynthos. Yanina is often considered the center of Romano Jewry, and people often are questioned, who are Romano Jewry? <coughs> I've had the honor of working with this community for many years, and even though my roots are in Salonika, I have to confess my heart is in Yanina. You had a community of Jews who truly knew the essence of what it was to be Jewish. They weren't rich, they weren't educated. They developed their own traditions and customs because being west of the Pindos mountain range was acted as a natural boundary. They were separate from the Sephardi communities. Before the Sephardim came into Greece, all of Greek Jewry, with very few exceptions, were Roman Yotes. With the Sephardic Jews coming in, within two generations, they absorbed most of the indigenous Roman Yote Jews. With the exception of those communities west of the Pindos Mountains and the island of Chalkis, which was sort of off the beaten track. They were small in number, but they were stubborn, and still are, by the way. Salonika is called the La, La Madre de Israel, the Jerusalem of the Balkans. While the majority of the Jews in the Balkans were Sephardim, their stories were not all the same. You know, we're influenced by the countries we live in. And what happened throughout the Balkans, each story is individual and special. Bulgaria was a close ally of Nazi Germany and was able to save its own Jews, but were directly complicit in the deportation of Jews in the Bulgarian zones of occupation of northeastern Greece and southern Yugoslavia. This has become a bone of contention with me because I argue with Bulgaria and I said I'm not going to be political tonight, but there are times you have to be. I've often said that for the Bulgarians to acknowledge their complicity in the murder of over 11,000 Jews would in no way diminish what they did in saving 50,000 Jews in their own country. But not to acknowledge their complicity diminishes their humanity. My family lived in Monastir. Countless numbers of my family perished. In Kavala, 12 members of my family perished. So this has become a very special, important story for me, even though our losses were so terrible in Salonika. At least they were acknowledged. At least those that committed those losses acknowledged them. But that's not true in the Bulgarian zones of occupation. Albania, in contrast to Bulgaria, was a mostly Muslim country and was able to save most of its Jews something that very few people know about. And in addition, offer a safe haven to Jews fleeing from other countries. Yeah, most people do not know about this. You know, it, it's interesting. Again, sometimes the politics of Yad Vashem enter into these stories. And I often wonder, is this true? Because it was a Muslim country. Jews in other parts of the former Yugoslavia, Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, Montenegro, became victims of local anti-Semitism where the local populations were all too willing to help the Nazis. There were also Sephardic communities in France and the Netherlands who bore the same fate as their Ashkenazi neighbors. Greece lost 87% of its Jewish population, one of the highest percentage of any officially occupied country. Sometimes we look at the totality of numbers. Poland lost three million of its three and a half million citizens, Jewish citizens. And yet, if we can use the word only in that context, 
it was only 84% of Polish Jewry. So Greece, even though their numbers of 67,000 were so much lower, it was 87%. We also lo lost those to tell the story. There have been many attempts to explain why these numbers of Greek Jewry loss were so high. In a country where there were easy routes of escape, surrounded by water and close to Turkey, a country that was technically neutral. Greece had one of the strongest resistance movements in all of Europe, and there were Greek Jews who fought in the resistance and who were saved in the mountains. The Greek Orthodox Church, and especially the prelates of the church, such as Archbishop Damaskinos, the Metropolitan Bishop Christosimos of Zakynthos, and others, were directly responsible for saving Jews. To this day, Damaskinos remains the only leader of a major non-Jewish religious organization, a church, the Greek Orthodox Church in Greece, who formally stood up to the Germans, risking his own life in an attempt to save the Jews of Greece. The story that's told is that when General Stroop came into Greece, this is the same General Stroop that was involved in the destruction of the Warsaw Ghetto, when he came into Greece, he was presented with a letter of protest handed to him by the Archbishop Damaskinos. It was not only from the church, it was from society of Greece. All the major unions in Athens signed on to that letter. According to legend, at that point, Stroop pointed a pistol at Damaskinos and threatened to shoot him. And Damaskinos looked him straight in the face and said, excuse me, prelates of the Greek Orthodox Church are not shot, they're hung. <laughs> well, he was not hung, and unfortunately the Germans paid little attention to the protest, and the deportations continued. What is more important is what Damaskinos did. He sent out the order to all churches, monasteries, to do everything possible to save the Jews. False IDs were issued. Jews were hidden in all parts of Greece. I feel very strongly that as we pass on the story of the Holocaust, the lessons that should be learned is not to have it happen again. We must create a generation that can think for themselves, that don't follow like sheep, that are outside the box, maybe a little bit anarchist, we have to tell them the stories of the righteous, those who risked their lives to save Jews. As president of the Association of Friends of Greek Jewry, we give our award of moral courage, and we pass these stories on to Yad Vashem. The destruction of Greek Jewry had so much to do with the timing of the Holocaust of Greek Jews. Late in the war, 1943-44, when many thought, especially after the capitulation of Mussolini, that the war was over and they would be spared. So much had to do with the isolation of Greek Jewry, both physically and mentally. This was a conservative community, a traditional community, a community that, unlike their Ashkenazi co-religionists, had not been exposed to the Enlightenment. So much had to do with the methodical way that the Germans manipulated the Jews of Greece, both with lies and intimidation. My mother's cousin was, was hung for trying to escape, along with four other young men, and their mothers were called to witness the hanging. This was the type of animal barbarian behavior, to do everything possible to intimidate the community, threats that if any of your family tried to escape, everybody would be killed. Many of the Jews from Greece came from large families, and families were not to be separated. While many had Christian friends who tried to talk them into fleeing into the mountains, coming from large families, they could not burden their aging parents with the care of younger children. The only legitimate reason for leaving your family was marriage or death. Finally, while many knew of the death camps, Greek Jews only learned of this when on arrival, and of course, it was too late. Knowledge of Auschwitz-Birkenau was there as early 
as the spring of 1942. And the Jews of Greece were not, the roundups did not begin until March of 1943. Who knew? Churchill knew. The Vatican knew. Roosevelt knew. But while British planes were dropping flyers in Greece, none of these flyers informed the Jews of Greece about the camps. And to be honest, if they had, who would believe such horrors as gas chambers and crematoria? Greece was bombed by the Allies from top to bottom. The only thing they did not bomb were the railroad lines, leading Greek Jews to their death. When approached by Rabbi Weiss, Roosevelt said probably what many people felt at that time. When we will solve the Jewish problem, and I cringe when I hear those words, we will solve the Jewish problem when we win the war. What was expedient was to win the war. Jewish lives were expendable. All we have to do is look at the story of the Jews on the island of Rhodes and Coast. July 1944, three months before the Germans left Greece, at a time when every, every ship was needed, every man was needed, the Germans were losing the war. They sent two boats down to the island of Rhodes to pick up the small community numbering 1,700. They stopped at the nearby island of Kos to take the 100 Jews living there and then stopped for one Jew on the island of Leros. Hitler's obsession was the total extermination of Jews. The excuse is often given that Sephardic Jews were not really Greek. After all, they spoke a form of Spanish called Ladino. But what about the Greek-speaking Romano Jews of Yanada? where 91% perished. It made no difference. Lost was not only lives, but especially in the case of Romanyot and Sephardic Jews, language, traditions, customs. While the actual number of, Sephardic, of Ashkenazi Jews murdered was so much greater, they still had those to tell the story. We lost the storytellers. It is now our responsibility to tell the story and make sure that the world never forgets these precious communities of Sephardic and Romano Jews. At a time when anti-Semitism is spreading, where hatred is rampant, we must continue to teach the lessons of the Holocaust. We must raise a generation of children who are not fearful of differences, but rather emphasize the humanity that we all share in common. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Lecha, <laughs> Ekra.